ECB is not done. Article from Bitcoin.com. Two members of the governing council of European Central Bank, the ECB, have shared their assessment of the inflation outlook in the Eurozone and expectations regarding the monetary authorities next move in that respect Bloomberg reported the biggest part of the current cycle of interest rate rises although more may follow according to Boris Vojic speaking in his home country on Wednesday the governor of the Croatian National Bank said that further hikes can be expected if core inflation or long-run inflation remains above 4% Vojic explained that while consumer price gains have been easing mainly due to base effects, underlying pressures excluding volatile items like food and energy remain high. The governing council in the Eurozone is the Euro system's main decision making body which comprises the six members of the ECB's executive board plus the governors of the national central banks of the 20 countries that have adopted the common European currency. During the same event in Croatia, Vujic's colleague at the council, Bastian Vassil, told participants that growth in price of service among the area is increasingly moving away from the ECB's 2% target. Quote, core inflation is clearly on the upward trend. End of quote. Vassil, who is the governor of the Bank of Slovenia, added that more monetary tightening is likely required, warning that the earlier shocks may have not fully passed through the system yet, meaning it's got to get worse before it gets better. So let's see what's going on instead in real time. Editor, Row Clips, fair use. Detectable difference uh, now that Croatia is part of the Eurozone bloc? Well, I would say that the transition itself went very smoothly uh, without any problems uh, and people are now gradually getting used to a new currency, uh, although one should also say that Croatia has have been quite used to the euro before, uh, because we have been using it, people were saving in euro, we are a tourist country, people have been exposed uh, very much to euro before, but still in everyday life it's a, it's a change to which people are adjusting. In terms of the economic benefits, we reaped them already before we got into the eurozone. Uh, basically since 2020 and start of the pandemic crisis when we were already on the road to the euro we entered the exchange rate mechanism in 2020 mm -hmm. and the banking union close cooperation with the ecb yeah. and since then we saw the reduction in the risk premium for a country and gradually markets pricing in the fact that we'll get in which mm -hmm. is reflected in the interest rates uh, in the markets and also uh, in the domestic uh, banking market Mm. in terms of the corporate cost of uh, borrowing or the household cost of borrowing. Mm. So this has been basically already uh, more than two years that we have been feeling the effects of entering into the Eurozone being positive for Croatia. Mm. Well, one of the big issues facing the Eurozone right now are extremely high levels of inflation and even though they have started to drop, uh, there are signs that core inflation is proving to be quite sticky. How is the situation, first of all, panning out in Croatia? Well, it's the same. Uh, the headline inflation has started to come down and uh, core inflation, underlying inflation, proves uh, more resilient, sticky, and we are just at a bit higher level of the inflation than the Eurozone average, as the Central East European members of the Eurozone are, because of the different composition in the first place of the CPI basket, where the food and energy consist of a higher proportion. But the trend is exactly, exactly the same. And because of that, the ECB have been tightening aggressive, uh, quite aggressively. They've been uh, tightening in clips of 50 basis points at a time. Do you think we're getting to the point now where the ECB can perhaps move to smaller increments, not necessarily continue to hike in 50 basis points, but can actually go a little lower with 25 basis points now? It is possible, but going into the next May meeting, we still wait for more data to come. Mm. And I think it will be, as we say, data dependent on what we will decide to do in the May, whether we stick with a 50 basis point or we move down to 25 basis points. What is the and main one, data you're going to be watching out for? And I think one thing that you also have to keep in mind is that we have then three monetary policy meetings in a relatively short period of time, May, June, July, uh, which will in the end be the path of the interest rate rises uh, over the relatively short period. 
of time. Mm. And what we are looking at are basically the, of course, primarily the inflation prints, uh, both the headline and uh, core inflation or the super core, all other mm. uh, basically indicators of the underlying inflation pressures, but also the uh, indicators of the real economy, mm. how strong is the uh, economy, how strong are the labor markets, and from that we derive the expectations. What does the politics of central bank look like when we extract ourselves from this high inflation? So Tom, the thing that keeps me up at night and the reason why I have been so publicly critical of the Fed um, is that if we're not careful, this episode of inflation and the way inflation is hitting particular segments of the populations hard is going to end up putting in play something that none of us want to put in play, and this organization knows better than anywhere else, which is the importance of the political autonomy of central banks. I am terrified that if central banks don't own their mistakes, if central banks don't learn from their mistakes and are public about this process, people are going to say, you're not accountable enough, and I'm not sure you should have the amount of political autonomy that you do. And operational autonomy is absolutely central, is absolutely critical to a central bank. Already, I mean, we talk a lot about, about credibility and forward guidance. What is the marketplace telling us today? The marketplace itself is doubting the Fed. So the Fed has been very consistent over the last few months that it will keep rates high for all of this year. An absolutely consistent picture. The market says, no, you're not. You're going to start cutting in the second half, and by the end of the year, interest rates will be a full percentage points below what you tell us they're going to be. I've never seen that divergence between forward guidance and what the market is pricing. And I worry that this inability to be held accountable is going to lead first to markets starting to go on their own way, and then of course, at the end of the day, the Fed can force an adjustment, but it becomes more costly if the market hasn't done some of the heavy lifting. And secondly, it will put the political autonomy of central banks in play, which is something that would be very harmful for economic well-being. Hey guys, it's Jose, your regular Joe Blow again, keeping an eye out and my ears open. I know, I know, I know I've been away for a while. Oh, damn! Emotional damn it! Guys, now I'm back. Thank God. You guys that watch this channel are blessed and prepared and are truly surfing all these situations occurring currently in our financial and political environment. And we will continue to thrive. And for sure, I'll continue to do my best to bring you the best. You guys have awarded me the freedom to do so. Thank you guys truly for the support. And let's continue to stay on par. Stay free. It ain't hard to tell. I excel, then prevail.